All right, well, we are at Goodwill today. We are at a Goodwill that we don't come to very often. Um, the reason we don't come here very often is because we don't often find things. However, there have been instances where we've walked in and we've walked out with a lot of really great things. So I'm hoping today is one of those days. We're going to head in. We're going to see what we can find that we can flip for a profit. Uh, I will be wearing a mask today. Goodwill is still requiring customers to wear masks. Um, their theory is if the employees are wearing masks, the customers should also be wearing masks. And I can respect that. So I'm going to be wearing my mask today. Um, but we're going to head in and we're going to see what we can find. Here we go. All right. So we are going to get started with the basket. This is a pr rather large goodwill. You can see it extends all the way down. Um, we're going to start here on this aisle. We are going to follow the arrows and we're just going to zigzag and hopefully find some goodies. Um, at some point I may have to insert a voiceover just because the speakers are positioned strategically throughout the store. Um, but hopefully it's not too bad. Kind of like this, but um, I can actually feel that this is just really cheap leather and so it's probably just a cheap basket. That is what I am deciding. Right. I mean these are cute. They're made in the Philippines. I think they're usually used for dolls. This is about when the child a few aisles down just starts having a meltdown um, and so I decided to spare you guys that and switch to a voiceover. So. I am now going to talk about what I am looking at, and this will be fun. Um, so I noticed this piece here on the shelf. You can tell I get excited because my fingers kind of go crazy. Um, it is $2.99. Uh, the bottom is marked, however, it looks like a hobbyist mark. What interests me is what appears to be a date on there, and I'm trying to figure out if it says 53 or 83. I cannot really tell through the sticker, but I like that the inside is pink and the outside is a greenish color. It's got a cool texture, kind of a lava glaze almost, and I like it. And so it goes into the cart. You guys know I'm not opposed to hobbyist pieces. And I thought that one was unique, so I decided to take a chance on it. Now I'm reaching through here um, with my really long arms. I like this piece. I'm not completely sure if it is old. It could be Teleflora. However, I'm checking here to see if there is any sticker under the Goodwill sticker. This kind of optic honeycomb look is similar to a lot of the brandy snifters that I pick up that are made in Italy. And so I decided to take a chance on this, that maybe it's old, but I wasn't sure at the time. That was just kind of a, I'll take a chance on this piece. I like the color. I think it's a beautiful color. So we decided to grab that. I'm having a hard time trying to look at both aisles at the same time. Uh, this, these were interesting. So these are transfer wear. Uh, they are unmarked. They are not hand painted. I love the purple flowers on them. Now I believe that these are possibly Germany or Austria judging by the transfer on them. Um, but I cannot confirm that. So I grabbed them. They are antique. They're definitely old and they are pretty. I like the purple flowers. This piece right here is a student piece. Again, I'm not opposed to student pieces. Chelsea did a wonderful job. I consider it, but then I decide, you know what, Chelsea, I'm sorry. I'm going to put you back on the shelf. Somebody else will fall in love with you. This is actually the Goodwill where we got the Demogorgon. So, I mean, you just never know what you're gonna find. Student pieces are always fun. I grabbed this because it looks like an older blown glass piece. Unfortunately, I realized very quickly that there is a crack on it. And so I have to leave it on the shelf, like a really bad crack. <laughs> Up here, we have another antique piece. Again, it is transfer, uh, probably Bavaria, possibly Austria. Um, that goes in the cart. I'm checking out that art glass, but oh boy, is that ever modern. This piece of art pottery is interesting and I grab it to check it out. And I realized very quickly that I think this is glue. I think these are glue drips. Um, effect I don't I've never seen that before it's new to me um, it's unusual maybe it's a thing I don't know but I pass on it 
these I kind of liked. They're not marks on the bottom. They're thicker than I would like, and so I leave those. Now, I wouldn't call myself the crazy lamp lady if I don't at least breeze through the lamps, but I'm just not really seeing anything, and so there's no point to even slow down at all because they're mostly modern or they're vintage and they're not in style. Just because a lamp is vintage does not mean it's worth money. There are a lot that are not in style. And so, of course, I go, oh, what is this? What did we just spot? It is a little carved head. I snatch it. I just snatched it right up, if you didn't see that. Um, <laughs> and it's a bottle opener. I thought it was pretty neat. I mean, it, it's hand carved, clearly. It's pretty cool. I might actually keep that for myself because it's that cool. I don't know yet. I'll probably end up listing it. I can't hold on to everything. So at this point in the video, um, the guy in the next aisle is on the phone and he is having a very interesting conversation. And um, I just, I decided that it was best if I did a voiceover here as well. And so most of this video is going to be voiceover. I like that tray, but there was just nothing great about it. Uh, this piece right here, it's an Alaska souvenir piece. I pass on that. These I consider, I know that I do have some viewers who like the wooden shoes. Um, I can get them really cheap in bulk at the flea market. Granted, $3.99 for a pair is pretty cheap. I'm not gonna like knock the price at all. And that's a pretty good price. But I know I can probably do better at the flea market if I'm gonna be buying wooden shoes. They don't sell for like incredible amounts of money and so I have to be careful. So this piece right here caught my eye because it is wood carved, it is painted, it is signed. It's a nice piece. We've had good luck with wood carvings in the past and so I like it. Um, I decided to put it in my cart. Uh, I've looked at the artist since going to the thrift store and the pieces sell for 10 to $15. So it's not an insane turnaround, but it'll be all right for what I paid for it. I've got some bookends here. Um, they're just not all that great. They're pheasants. I mean, they're okay, but the spittoon is quite the piece as well. I passed on the spittoon. <laughs> this is kind of a nice piece. It is marked Homer Laughlin on the bottom. It would have likely come with a bowl. I believe it was a wash pitcher, um, but unfortunately it is missing the bowl. I liked this, it was carved stone, but it was made in the Philippines or made in Indonesia, I believe. And so I decided to pass on that just because it had a more modern sticker. You guys know me, I'm not a fan of modern stickers. I liked this, this is a duck. It is made out of pine cones. That's a thing. And I, I just really liked it. I thought it was a neat piece. These were interesting, but I'm not sure exactly what they were, but they were hand painted and that's kind of what attracted me to those. This is a stack of plates. I believe they're Steubenville and yes, they are Steubenville. Um, I just wasn't really interested in any more plates. I have a lot of plates that I need to get listed and so plates just, unless they're great, I'm just gonna pass on them. Alright, so I'm just taking you down the brown aisle. I like to look in the brown aisle because there are frames and the potential to find artwork. There are baskets. There are usually good things hiding in the brown aisle. Um, and so I noticed this piece right here. I lift some things off of it. It is a print and I don't really do a whole lot with prints. I prefer original artwork, so I pass on that. This piece right here, it's a redware, but it looks like it's souvenir. This, on the other hand, this looks good. Um, this is, I believe, a hobbyist piece. However, the gingerbread men on the sides of the cookie jar very much resemble the gingerbread men on the Bartlett Collins glass cookie jar. Um, and so I decided to put that in my cart in the hopes that it will do well. 
However, I do believe it is a hobbyist piece because there was like a little initials on the bottom. So they may have just liked the Bartlett Collins cookie jar and decided to copy the gingerbread men on it. Uh, here we've got some more frames. There is a glass mug up here, but it's just a single, so I decided to pass on that. This back here is either a little marmalade or a sugar. Um, it is missing its spoon, but it's 99 cents and it's made in Italy, so it's pretty good quality. This, this has the potential to be something good. Robinson Rand's bottom of Roseville, Ohio. I don't even know if you can hear me, but this is a good piece for $2. All right, so I'm attracted to this teapot because of the texture. However, it is missing all of the little cups and the rattan handle, unfortunately, is not in the best of condition. So I decide to pass on that. And there isn't a whole lot left on these shelves and I make the decision to round the corner and avoid the fake flower wreaths and the pillows. Um, this piece on the corner was kind of interesting, but I thought it was a little strange. It's what Andrew would refer to as bedroom art. <laughs> so I turn here and boom, I couldn't have moved any faster probably. I believe this is a brush McCoy piece. It is $1.99 and it sells for between $15 and $20. So I thought that was a pretty good snag. That's what that was. That was a snag and definitely. Um, here I find another one of the yellow mugs. But first look at this horse. It's quite cute. Okay, enough about the horse. I'm going to put this where it belongs. Over with the other yellow mug. Still a pair isn't really worth it to me, so um, I'm gonna pass on the pair. If there was four, I might consider, but not the pair. That is a modern piece made to look old. Checking for marks on the bottom of these pieces. This is like this biomorphic, but if this caught my attention. I picked it up. It was too lightweight to be anything special. You can see it kind of wobbling there on the shelf. Um, it would have been more weighted on the bottom if it was something special. At least that's how I feel. Uh, this had a giant chunk out of it. Ooh, I kind of like this. I mean, it's it's a little slot. Oh wait, no, there's two. Definitely, I would do it for two of them. So the two of them go in my cart. I probably would have passed on the one, but the fact that, you know, there's two, I will do it. Uh, this is interesting, but there would have been two little salt and pepper shakers that are missing. I think they would have looked like eggs probably, uh, but they're nowhere to be found. So we pass on that. Here we have two little pink vanity jars. They appear to be vintage, so I grab both of them for 99 cents each. This vase just happens to match, but it is ceramic. It's got a semi-modern sticker. This is a nice piece. It's a very heavy glass. It could be modern, but I'm obsessed with glass, so I can't say no to it. It goes in the cart. Now this piece says Germany on the bottom. I like the finish. The glaze on that is quite nice, and so I decide to put that in my cart. This looks like a lobster. Everything over in that section tends to be a little bit higher priced. That's kind of where they put their good stuff. And I usually don't bother going over there because I can find good stuff on the shelves. Like this, just kidding. I think it says made in Taiwan. It is, it is cute, but it's just not for me. 
I like the applied handle on this, but it's just another piece of glass. These pieces right here, you can see the flash is wearing off of them. And so I pass. This from a distance looks like Fevro glass. It's got that really oily sheen. However, if you can tell there by that chip, it is actually ceramic and it's painted to look like that. And so it's really not as magnificent as it looks from a distance, but that's why it moves so quickly. I didn't want anyone else to grab it. I always look at these plates to see if they're world's fair. Here we've got a little pitcher and under plate. It is more than likely Italy, however, it is not marked, but I would go with Italy. Uh, it's $3 and I decide to take it for $3. Wow, well you look at that. <laughs> this piece right here closely resembles the optic that I was talking about earlier. Um, it looks in poly, however, it has a Made in Mexico sticker. So I like this little deviled egg plate, but there's just too much damage on that and I'm forced to pass on it. I probably could have expected to get about 15 to 20 for that. This piece right here, I don't immediately recognize that mark. It's got some good weight to it, and so I'm slightly conflicted over it. Don't recognize the mark. I decide to leave it, and I hope I've made the right decision. These teacups back here catch my eye. Unfortunately, as you will see, there is damage and they are missing their saucers, and so they are useless to me, and I leave them behind. I don't know why I picked that up. I don't think it's worth anything. There's a little man sleeping on the stem of that. This piece right here, I believe, is made in China. It's not the quality of Murano, so it stays on the shelf. I spy this lidded jar down here. It is an avocado green. It's more than likely vintage. It's got some weight to it. It's $6.99. I do like that ground lid, but it's heavy. It's like really heavy. And so I decide to pass. $12.99 for the made in China vase. That's a bit much. I mean, everything else up until that point had been decent. I don't know why they've got $12.99 on that. We've got some art pottery here, probably student pieces. Some prints, I believe those are Norman Rockwell prints. This is an interesting piece. It is not marked on the bottom, but it is a redware clay. The design is nice. However, the price is not. Where's the price? $6.99, yes. Um, that's a little bit too much. This looks like Blue Mountain Pottery. I didn't recognize the mark. I recognized the glaze, but then I looked at the bottom and I was like, is that their mark? I don't know. I think I might pass on this because I don't have a sugar to go with it. You guys know I like textiles. I thought this was cute. It is signed. I had it upside down, but that stays living on the shelf. This is a finished piece of artwork, but probably a little too much to ship. I'm trying to limit my artwork um, and only get the exceptional pieces right now because 
I'm, I've been bringing in quite a bit of artwork and uh, the guys usually have to build a box. We really just need to get mirror boxes and I believe we could order those, um, but the guys have been building boxes for the artwork I bring in and so it would just benefit us to do something else. Oh, look at that giant swung glass vase. Don't mind if I do. It is clear, um, it's a clear one. So I've never really ventured into clear territory with spun glass, but for $1.99, I will take it. Yes, please, thank you. Stay right there. These mugs I like. They are not marked on the bottom, but they've got a nice glaze. I don't know if that's a paperweight or a bookend. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. We're talking about the mugs. Um, the mugs for $1.99. That's a dollar each. And they go in the cart. Check out this piece and modern marks on the bottom, of course. There is a little penguin mug and he deserves a friend who also has penguins. There you go. You're welcome. So this set is likely Japan. This is the sugar. The lid is down there, but the lid has a crack. And, um, Salt cellars, but check this out. Another one of these pieces, so that's going in the cart. That's great. All right. Well, that concludes our trip to the Goodwill. I would say that that was a success. Whenever I leave with a full cart, that is a successful trip to Goodwill. So I hope you guys forgive the voiceover. I know it. You know, there are people on both sides of the issue. Uh, either you like it or you don't. But it was just, there was a guy following me around talking really loud on his phone at one point. I mean, a couple thousand dollars in like two oh, days, right. you know. There was a baby screaming. We'll be done before the end of the line. Yeah. There was a baby with a squeaker toy. <laughs> it was a lot of noise. And I figured I'd save all of you that noise and I would just do a voiceover this time. Um, I'm not gonna do voiceovers every single time. I try to mix it up if I can, if I can get away with it. But um, this was just one of those cases where it was unavoidable. So I hope you guys didn't mind the voiceover, but we will, we will try not to have to do voiceovers. Anyway, that being said, our total spend there was $60. So we got that entire cart for $60. It was $60 even because we rounded up, but yeah. I guess I need to remind you about my shirt campaign. <laughs> I know you guys love this part. Uh, the campaign through Bonfire is still active. I am running a limited time shirt campaign through Bonfire for Banana Box Antiques, which will be the name of our store whenever we open. Um, so I've put a link to that down in the description. The campaign ends on June 30th, 2020. And after that, those shirts are no longer available, so you can no longer order them. And after the campaign ends is when all of the shirts ship out. So they just ship them out in bulk and the shirts will ship out on or around July 8th, 2020. So that's when the orders will be shipped out. But if you're interested in some of that merch, feel free to check out the link down in the description. And I guess I will see all of you guys tomorrow for the next Goodwill because that's where we're heading next. I'll see you guys later, bye. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook.